che ci parlasse con Matt, Matt Jones che, che fra l'altro ha un'esperienza specifica in terapia intensiva il razionale per l'uso del sicuro che è in terapia intensiva ovviamente è il fatto che sono pazienti che vengono mobilizzati in continuazione eh, vengono presi, portati alla TAC, riportati in sala, portati in sala operatoria, riportati in rianimazione sono pazienti che eh, vengono spesso mobilizzati per lo scopo di pulizia e quant'altro e ogni mobilizzazione del paziente comporta un rischio di dislocazione oltre a questo sono pazienti che possono essere febbrili, avere fe avere sudurazioni eccetera e indubbiamente queste sudurazioni possono far sì che il, eh, i normali sistemi di attacco cutaneo tipo, su, tipo sucio adesità cutanea come lo statlock, il wingard o il griplock possano non tenere bene quindi sentiamo un attimo un'esperienza in proposito di intervento intensivo di, di Matt Thank you. Um, I am English, obviously. Um, I don't speak Italian. Um, I don't think we have a translation, so I will speak slowly for those who uh, English is not uh, as good as mine. Um, so that's me. I'm uh, just going to talk about my experience um, and what we're developing in the UK uh, around the use of the Secure Cath on intensive care for uh, CVCs, or CICCs, as I uh, should say. Un momento. Si. Um, so, uh, going back uh, a little while, we used um, to suture uh, all of our central lines in uh, CICCs on intensive care. There was, as you know, uh, new evidence to suggest that this was not the best way to do this. So I um, went into my ITU uh, with a task to try and uh, change practice, um, have a look at what we were doing now uh, at that time, and changing to using um, a sutureless fixation device. Um, it wasn't clear at the time uh, what that meant, what a sutureless fixation device was. Um, it just said you shouldn't really use a suture. Um, at the same time, the Secura CAF uh, interestingly came to my attention uh, in the UK. So I did uh, a trial on my uh, intensive care unit using many different types of sutureless fixation device. And it became quite clear. Uh, very quickly that the Secura CAF was both uh, effective and safe. Uh, it did the job we wanted it to do, it was relatively easy to use um, and it was relatively safe. So this is what my patients on intensive care used to look like. Um, this is a particularly bad example. They didn't all look this bad. Um, I think we all have experience of uh, this type of securement and fixation, um, which is, uh, was, was very poor in those days, but we didn't have any other alternatives. So after introducing the Secura CAF uh, and fine-tuning our techniques, um, we ended up with our central lines uh, looking like this, our CICCs, um, which was uh, much uh, nicer. I mean, it, I don't have a lot of published evidence, but we did the audits of patient satisfaction. We did audits uh, studying the nurses uh, using the lines, um, how they felt about it, how easy it was to change the dressings, um, all of these kind of factors we put together um, and, and re-establish the fact that the Secura Cath really was uh, a very good product for what we wanted it to do, which was to just keep our line safe uh, and secure. Um, so this is a, another line um, in, in a bit closer. Um, you can see uh, it was very effective in reducing um, a whole host of, of problems we had in terms of um, uh, suturing. Suturing, I think, is really, really bad for these lines. 
um, because you're, you're making holes in the skin, you're causing bleeding, and they're no, they're no more or less secure in our experience with the Secura cath. As I said yesterday, we did some testing. <laughs> I love to test products and the sutures that we used would come out of the skin about the same force as they would with the Secura calf. Um, we did some tests, on, not, not on live humans, but just testing how quickly the, secu the suture would pull through and how quickly the Secura calf would pull through, and it was, it was fine. Um, there's another one, as you can see. Now, I'd just like to point out, and this is uh, perhaps an interesting time to do this, we'll all talk about um, where we position our lines, where we go into um, the, the vein, and, but then also where the exit site is, if you like, or where it's dressed. We're putting together sort of two and two together. The Securicath also enabled us to make a really novel jump forward. Um, and that was because in the UK, um, doctors who place these lines almost always go into the internal jugular. But because we know that the internal jugular is not a good place to secure the line like this, with the secure cath, we were able to then lay the line, go into the internal jugular, but then lay the line out sideways onto the shoulder. So you get the advantages of it being clean and away from the, if you look at this picture, clean and away from the beard. And the nurse is very much like all the pumps over here. Uh, it doesn't pull on the line, doesn't pull it down. But it's only with the secure cath you have that opportunity to position it wherever you want. Because once the line is sutured, you can't move it into a better position. So what I would do is in the when, they, when the, tray, the junior doctors at the weekend and at night time have stuck it here, you can drop it, come and change, clean, and put it in a better position. So it gives you flexibility. Once it's sutured, once it's sewed down, you can't move it. So it was a big step forward for us, not just in terms of securement, but also in terms of aftercare, positioning, comfort for the patient, and, and comfort for the nurses as well. So we introduced into routine practice as part of a wider quality improvement initiative, and that included aftercare, cleaning, maintenance, infection prevention, looking at our CLABSI infection rates, and all of these added together. The Securicath enabled us to do that because of the lower risks of the problems with bleeding uh, and so on. So overall, the quality of our lines really improved. We had better dressing integrity. Um, the dressings were better stuck down, there was much less soiling, there was less blood, and, and the aftercare was really, really uh, a real improvement, both for the nurses and for the patients. So my conclusion from this was that the, the, the Securicath has made a really big difference. It's secure. Uh, I think it's as secure as a suture. It's very clean on insertion, so there's no holes in the skin. It's very safe, and that's the other thing we haven't mentioned, is the needle stick, the risk with the needle, but not just uh, to, to the person putting it in, but on the trolley when in a busy intensive care unit, nurses are picking up and the needle is lost or it goes into the staff nurse's hand. It's very clean, easy to clean afterwards because you can lift it up. I've already mentioned that. You can it's sutured down, you can't clean round, and your pictures also demonstrated that very nicely. As I said, it's comfortable for the patients. So where are we going now? I'm trying to uh, get this process and this model that we've adopted into other intensive care units in the UK. We also just started trialing the larger Secura casts, the 10 and 12 French, on our VAS casts as well, trying to go through the same process, trying to find the best practice we can of using, not using sutures for our VAS cath. Do you know what a VAS cath for, for renal? Um, also VAS cath in Italian? There we go. One of those. Okay. <laughs> um, and, and it's looking good. It's very early days. Um, we're probably the first unit in the country to be doing that, um, and we're, it looks, looks very positive. So thank you very much.
Quindi Matta ci ha parlato di quelli che sono i vantaggi dell'utilizzo in terapia intensiva. Non, avete notato che non soltanto il vantaggio in termini di dislocazione, ma in termini di vantaggio anche di pulizia migliore del, del sito d'emergenza e di maggiore attendibilità diciamo così, del fissaggio. E per qualche strano motivo eh, l'unico studio randomizzato che esiste in letteratura è un confronto eh, diciamo così, tra lo Statlock e il Securacat. L'esperienza di Matta fa vedere un altro tipo di... Di, di confronto tra il seguro e i punti di sutura. Eh, tenendo presente che i punti di sutura ormai non si dovrebbero mai usare, a maggior ragione il seguro eh, ne riesce come l'unico sistema oggi esistente per assicurare dislocazioni zero, con il vantaggio appunto della sua flessibilità e pulizia.